Hello, today we're taking a look at the brand new Micro Galaxy Squadron AT-AT. This thing is just starting to hit Walmarts across the US, so if you have this thing pre-ordered, or even if you don't, but you want to get it earlier than that pre-order date, go ahead and start checking out some of the Walmarts near you. They may have gotten a shipment in of a few of these. This thing is going to cost you $60 if you go and pick it up at Walmart. So we'll take a look and see at everything that comes with it, and we'll decide whether or not that's a good price. So here's the walker out of its packaging, and before we take a look at anything with the vehicle itself, I'd like to start out looking at the background art that was included with the packaging. They make it so that you can take this art out of these boxes and almost set it up as a display behind the vehicles. So I think it's worth taking a look, and I'm really impressed with this one. The art depicts the Battle of Hoth with a lot of snow speeders and walkers and the shield generator and laser fire all over the place, and it looks great. Except if you look back here, you can see these walkers on the ridge and it looks like somebody messed up the layering because they are in front of the turret back there. And yeah, that was a mistake that should have been caught and it doesn't look like it was caught in time. So it does unfortunately stand out. But overall, other than that, this looks like a pretty good background. Now that we've looked at the background, let's go ahead and take a look at the various figures that are included in this one. There's a pretty good selection here, so let's go ahead and take a close-up look at each of these included figures. First up, we have the AT-AT driver, which is labeled as the AT-AT pilot. Normally, you don't see it labeled pilot. Normally, it's driver. Anyway, it looks really good here with some impressive paintwork on that Imperial insignia up on the helmet. Moving on, the next one we have is going to be General Veers. Nice paint all around it. Then we've got Luke Skywalker from Hoth. He has his lightsaber out. He's got some nice paint detailing on the helmet, ready to climb up that walker. And then we have two snow troopers that were included. It's good that they included multiple of these. That way you can start to build up an army in the back of your walker. Now that we have the big walker out of the box, we can go ahead and start looking at the 18 plus advertised features and lights and sounds that are all over this thing. But before we can do that, we have to look at the included instruction manual. That's right, this thing comes with a manual, so let's look at what's inside. The first page of this manual shows you everything that's included, the walker, the accessory pieces, the speeder bike, the figures, and on the lower half of that page, it's going to show you the process for putting in batteries. That's right, this thing does require three AAA batteries. It does not include them, so you'll have to provide them yourself. And there's just a portion of the underbelly there that you can screw off to insert those batteries. And that'll allow you to use some of the features that are showcased on the back of this manual. And all of those features are right back here. You can see some various buttons you can press that it looks like will do lights and sounds, different hatches and doorways that you can open up, posable legs and heads and everything like that. And all of that starts with taking this piece off here to insert the three AAA batteries. It's a really easy piece to unscrew if you move the legs out of the way. And there are three individual slots for you to slide these batteries into. They fit in pretty nicely, not too hard to get them in there. Once you've gotten all three of these batteries in there, you can go ahead and reattach that piece on there. You will have to screw it back in. It's not held in by any latches or anything like that. And once those batteries are in there, you can go ahead and activate the first feature that we're going to look at by hitting this big button right over here on the side. And once you hit that button, it will play a sound. and it will activate the red light up at the front of the head of this thing, which will look really cool shining down through that viewport. Let's go ahead and turn the lights down so that you can see what that looks like with the lights off. And you can tell that without any lights on, it is a very bright light. So you won't have any problem having this thing look good even when you have some lights on. Pressing that first button does a few more things as well, but all of those features can be found inside the main hull of this thing, which you can access by removing a panel on the side. So let's go ahead and take that off so that we can look at what those other features inside of this thing are. Once you've got that open, you can see that there are a few different compartments that are hidden away inside of here. You can access the bottom one by swinging out this crane. We'll cover what that does in a moment. And that gives you access to that bottom room. And when you hit that button on the side, it lights up different parts of the inside. Again, it's not the easiest to see with the lights on. So we're gonna go ahead and dim the lights. And now that the lights are dimmed, you can really see all the little features that light up inside of here. The screens and computers on the bottom floor that add a nice blue light to everything. You can see up on the level above, you have that grilled blue light coming through. That looks really good up there as well. 
Turning the hull lights off and the studio lights back on, we can look at the very back compartment of the walker, which can house the speeder bike that is included in this set, as well as three additional bikes. Unfortunately, it doesn't come with more bikes, but you can fit this first one in by just sliding it in on a peg like that. It fits in really nice, really easily. Again, you can fit four total bikes. However, there is a little problem with the very bottom back slot. There's a little triangle there that makes it difficult to fit in that bike into that spot. It's not impossible. And you can see here that I can finagle it in and get it to stay in there okay with a little bit of effort. Probably should have been looked into a little closer though because it shouldn't be that difficult to get a bike attached into that spot. But once it's in there, it looks pretty good. I would love to fill this thing up with all four bikes. Now that we've opened this thing up, let's look at what the figures look like inside of this vehicle. And you can see that they look really nice. They fit well into the environment in here and they actually scale nice with everything. I especially like how this top room looks with the seats. You can fit, of course, the two that are included with this set, but there are seats for way more in case you were to build up a snowtrooper army somehow. You can also access the space below those seats if you move this crane arm out of the way and get some figures in there. But while we're talking about that crane arm, let's go ahead and look at what that crane can do. If you attach the speeder bike onto the hook of this crane once it's down here, then it'll latch in there really well and you can go ahead and actually start reeling it back in from up top. It's not the quickest thing to do, but as it's moving up, it does look pretty cool and it is a nice little play function that adds a lot more immersion into this vehicle. The spool can also be unwound with the bike on it, so you can lower the bike from the hull down to the floor, and it looks just as good if you do it this way as if you were to pick it up. Moving forward here, we'll take a look at the head of the walker, which is sculpted really beautifully, but also includes a compartment that you can open up and put some figures in. You can take a look here at the space and detailing that's included inside here. It looks pretty good, but it looks even better with figures. And now that we're seeing the figures in here, you might think it looks good, but you'll see a problem. There's only one AT-AT driver. They really should have included two with this set because we know that walkers have two. They even include seats for two. So that's a miss, not including a second one. The head also has really great articulation, like even better than anything Hasbro's ever done. You can see for the neck connecting piece, they decided to make it out of rubber, so it's really easily bendable and you don't feel like you're going to damage any parts of it. And you can just bend the head up, down, side to side, and you can get it to stay in pretty much any of those poses. It even has a little tolerance in case you overextend it, it'll just snap back into the next position it can. And that's awesome that they included so much posability with this head. While we're up here, let's take a look at what the second button can do if we press it up top here. All troops will debark for ground assault. Prepare to target the main generator. And if we press the side button again. Moving underneath the walker, we can take a look at how the Luke Skywalker figure can attach to the bottom using that cable that comes included. There's a little slot that you can hook the end of that cable into. You have to kind of finagle it in there and rotate it around. Once you do that, it'll hook in. You can pull it. It isn't going anywhere. And then you can attach your Luke figure to the little part at the bottom. The problem with that is it's too long of a rope. If you let him go, he doesn't really dangle underneath it. He goes all the way to the floor. I guess you could try to fix that by tying knots in the rope to make it shorter, but this really should have just been a shorter rope so that you could get him to dangle. It doesn't look good with him on the floor like this. Continuing the trend from the head, the legs also have really easy, really great posability. There's a lot of articulation that you can get here really easily. It doesn't feel like you're putting any stress on the joints at all when you move them. They snap into position really well, and it's not too hard to get it to balance in multiple different poses. You can have the legs in a walking position, you can move it around, and I really like how easy they made it to move the legs on this thing. Now, for a little bit of scale reference, here's the recently released Series 2 Luke Snowspeeder next to this walker. A lot of people are probably going to set these two up together, so how do they look? They look okay, I think. Not perfectly in scale, though. It's cool when you can recreate scenes like this, having the walker step on the snowspeeder. I think the walker is way too small, but they made it as big as they needed to for it to work with the figures and other vehicles you're going to have around it. You can even go ahead and use the tow cable from the back of the snowspeeder and 
and kind of wrap it around the leg. It's not that long of a cable, so you can't actually wrap it multiple times around the legs, but in a pose like this, it can look pretty good. Before I forget, I also want to mention that they included a little stand for that speeder. They didn't have to do that, so it was really nice that they did. If you want to have the speeder pose separately, this makes it easy to do that. So let's just take a look at the sculpt all around this thing. You can see that there's really great detail that they included here, not only in the wash that they gave it and the different paint applications, but just in the sculpt itself. The way that they included the buttons made the knot stand out, they feel really natural. Moving down the legs and the feet, all of that also looks great. The way that the joints are kind of hidden in and look like part of the machine is perfect. It gives this thing a really nice overall look. Even if you move to the back of it here, some really great detail in the dark gray that they include on some of those pieces. On the other side of the hull, you can see that they continue just having a great sculpt, great little detailing and greeblies. The screws that they use to hold this whole thing together are hidden over overall pretty well, so it looks like one seamless piece that all looks well detailed. So, for everything that we get in this set, do I think it's worth the $60 price tag with all of the figures, the little speeder bike, the actual walker with all the features itself, its little dangling Luke Skywalker? I think so. It's uh, easy to forget that $60 isn't actually a bad deal now nowadays. We're used to prices being pretty bad now. Um, if you look at the TVC speeder bike, that thing alone was $45. Do we think that this is worth $15 more than that? I think you're getting a whole lot more for that extra $15 here. Even though not everything is perfect with this, it doesn't have a great feature for Luke here. He dangles a little too low. The speeder bike rack, that last one can get a little bit clogged up. It was really a miss not including two at, -AT drivers, just throwing in one. Other than that, this is a really great set to go ahead and get. I'm excited for when these become more widely available. I'm probably gonna get more than one of them to set up a little scene. This thing looks really good. It's got great articulation. The lights and sounds are all excellent. For $60, I think you're getting yourself a pretty good deal.